From the southernmost point of Dorne to the lands of always winter, what is west of Westeros in the shadows of the east, this is Casterly Talk, and I'm Ken Napsok for a teaser trailer reaction, pondering, rumination, insight, and also just plain guessing, because that's what a lot of folks do after one-minute teaser trailers. Just guess. That's a thing I saw. I know that sword. I know that knight. I know the green dresses. I know the black dresses. Ah, yes, here we are. But more importantly, more than any of that, this is just fun. This is just fun. Uh, So what we've been doing uh, here on Castle Talk lately is just kind of waiting for House of Dragon. We're geared up to make a big push here on Castle Talk. So make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, subscribe to the podcast. We've always kind of been a podcast first. We'll remain a a podcast first. But we're going to start getting ready for House of Dragon. It's in the plans. It's what we want to do. It's what we kind of need to do. It's always fine, even if you're a diehard Song of Ice and Fire fan. Love Game of Thrones. Sometimes you need refreshments, little refreshments in your brain. Not refreshments, cookies, but little refreshers of what uh, what you're about to see. That's just plot. And that's why they have the breakdowns and the Easter eggs and all those things. And I watch those videos, too. But here at Cashly Talk, we're in the middle of a big uh, rewatch of HBO's The Game of Thrones. And looking at the show as itself, as a show, and what the story uh, was uh, told, uh, the story that they wanted to tell with that show. And, and diving into the themes and the lessons and how it applies to our lives. And, and how, if you're a super fan, you are a super fan of, of what it means to your, uh, at times, very existence. Your own uh, walk through this crazy world. That's how I love to approach these things. That's how I love digging in. So I don't want to, um, I don't want to make anyone, uh, I don't want to spread any lies here. I'm not here to uh i'm not here just to stare at a screen and react to a video um i'm here to to see what we get and what we've gotten so far and see what it might mean and take some big swings along the way and more importantly more above all just celebrate this was fun i i had to wake up early today and 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 and, uh, as i'm still kind of wiping the sleep away from my eyes it's like what is it house of the dragon teaser and i thought oh then just must be some logo they flashed another logo uh maybe some no we actually got some footage, not a lot, not a lot. Like I said, just over a minute at the time of this recording, uh, it has been watched on uh, the old YouTube 3.5 million times. So do fans still love Game of Thrones? Are they still curious about Game of Thrones? And when I say Game of Thrones, I do just mean the world and, and this franchise that we've uh, kind of got rolling out in front of us here in HBO. Uh, what do we have? Are people excited? Are people uh, feel a little dubious, a little dubious? Uh, they want to see what's going on? Yeah, I think that all factors in to what uh, has happened today. Um, some excitement, some uh, certainly questions, some cynicism, some snark. It's all out there, and that's part of the fun here. So let's um, let's dive in a little bit to what we got going on here with uh, this trailer. And yeah, I'm going to show uh, you know some of my favorite shots and things I, I like and. Uh, like I said, along the way here uh, on the podcast, we'll, we'll dive into the Easter eggs and what they all mean. But at the point of being grumpy, I, got, I, I warn you all to just not completely get lost in that Easter egg. Uh, that's a night I know. That's a name I know. That's in this a section of a book I know. Uh, don't get lost in that. I, I think you'll trap yourself uh, when this show actually comes on out. The world that George R. R. Martin created is so vast and it's so just uh, wonderfully rich. And 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 complicated and 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 compelling all all the big buzzwords you want to say it's it's all there but um the show itself just was had a story it was trying to tell and I will argue to my dying day that thirty seconds into the pilot episode of Game of Thrones the one that we saw um, the show had started started to forge its own path and I'm not here to make you uh, love season eight of Game of Thrones like I do or uh, accept season seven like I do I, I'm not here to do that I'm just here to say a lot of the things that happen are, are uh, with, with those expectations just kind of of what you you thought you were gonna get boxed you into uh, your your enjoyment uh, boxed you away and boxed you out of your enjoyment and also again what the show was doing there's a lot of things here that are about to come your way on House of the Dragon. Uh, that uh, potentially can have great meaning. We don't know showrunners Ryan Condal and Miguel Sapochnik. Um, 
uh, I almost said uh, Sipowitz uh, from, from NYPD Blues, but Gil Sabachnik, um, we don't know exactly what they're planning yet, but we start, we got a big clue here today. A little bit later in the show, I'm going to have some of your reactions on Twitter because I think those are more valuable than my reactions. I'm here to kind of uh, coll coll collate all, all the uh, celebrations, all the reactions, and celebrate along with you. Here's the first thing I want to start about the discussion about this little teaser trailer here. Uh, I talked to some Game of Thrones fans, some fans, not people who've just watched it one time, uh, maybe not book readers, uh, because they would you would have a, a little bit of a more understanding of what uh, we're about to watch with this show, but like super, super fans and, and super casual fans and super general fans. And I, I don't like putting any kind of fandom into categories, no gatekeeping here. Uh, in fact, I'm quite the opposite. When it comes to Game of Thrones, the world of ice and fire, I, I am I'm the opposite of a gate, 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 uh, gatekeeper. I want you all in here. I don't care if you don't quite know that person's name or you don't kind kind of remember uh, the events of a dance and Dra uh, dance of dragons like this. I want everyone in here, and the show has got to reach all those fans. But two or three conversations today on the uh, the trailer being released of, oh my gosh, that looked great. One question: What's it? What's it actually about? Um. HBO has uh, been, I don't want to say mom, that's not thats not correct. We know what the show's about. The, 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 some of the press photos have been out there. Um, don't want to factor in uh, the, the set leaks, but the, the concept of the show, which is uh, the dying of the dragons, the dance of the dragons, uh, the big Targaryen civil war. It's sometimes fair to ask uh, when hearing, oh, it's about the Targaryen civil war to say, well, which one? Because they, they weren't always getting along. But this is, this is a big one. And uh, obviously mentioned and referenced and, and important to the books uh, that um, the Song of Ice and Fire series. But also, uh, if you want to actually just read about it, like it's a history book, uh, you do have the World of Ice and Fire book, but also Fire and Blood, Volume 1, which for me, I always say is one of my favorite reading experiences from George R. R. Martin. And it's not everyone's favorite Game of Thrones related book, but it's the Targaryen history. I think George does a, does a great job of just just writing this history as real and and leaving enough room in in that story to tell the stories you want to tell based around this event, Dance of Dragons, but also getting the big points out of the way. So that's kind of the first thing. And I ask you all if you are one of those like, oh, hey, I do love Game of Thrones. I uh, I'm here with it. I, I maybe I left at the end, but I'm going to come back, or maybe I want to come back. And 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 you saw this trailer, you're excited. I wonder if the idea of hey, what is this actually going to be about was properly communicated or was it held back on purpose which is a fair question just to kind of say hey remember that world you loved and remember towards the end of it yeah there were some conversations about what was right and wrong about some of the decisions of the creators yeah, that's good but hey do you remember the dragons uh, you remember the khaleesi you like them right you like those targaryens you like that fire and blood phrase right this is what you got that's what this show's about don't worry about the rest. We'll fail on the details later. That's what this show's about. And, and I think that's effective. I think uh, not getting lost into the weeds of what this was and just kind of speaking in general terms, this beginning with this 200 years before the fall of the throne. I think that has some meaning, but I also think it's just like, cool. We're going back then. You remember, you remember then we're going, we're going back. And that's all you kind of need to know. And I love that. It's a tease. It's a tease. And let all the other YouTube channels, let all those uh, Game of Thrones uh, super fans start telling you about the greens and the blacks and the high towers and uh, Corliss uh, Villaron, uh, the sea snake, all those names that we're going to discuss and break down here. And they're going to be part of our lives now as Game of Thrones fans if they weren't already. Those those conversations will happen. I, I just love that this trailer did, did what I think they set out to do. It's going to be big and epic. And it's going to have foreboding voiceovers. It's going to have some dragons. It's going to even have that throne you love. We're going back to all that. That's a good place to start. It's a good place to uh, move on uh, after this teaser trailer and get ready for the show. Uh, but what does it mean? Uh, what are some of the themes that might be at play here? Now, to do a little bit of a just a general recap. But again, uh, I, I think it's uh, it's always fun to just go back in and read some of the history. Um, we've got some of the main players. We got uh, Viserys Targaryen, the first, uh, Patty Constantine playing him. Uh, we have got his daughter, Princess Rhaenyra, and then uh, eventually he's going to marry Alison Hightower. And there's uh, some of the problems. We got the big uh, tournament coming up there, at King's Landing, uh, to celebrate uh, uh, Viserys's marriage to Alison. Uh, and we're going to have the, the big tourney, and, and there with tensions 
boiling, starting to boil over. We got Renera wearing the black and the red of the Targaryen um, house. And we got uh, uh, the queen, uh, Alison uh, Hightower, um, wearing the green. And there you go, the greens and the blacks. And that begins. And that's all the players. And you got uh, uh, House of Lauren. Then you, you got uh, Otto Hightower, the hand of the king. We see a lot of that stuff there. That's kind of the beginning of this. And then all hell is going to break loose. And we are going to have a bunch of dragons flying around. We're going to have people burned. We're going to have people killed maimed destroyed um and we're gonna have some uh you know nieces and uncles marrying all those kind of things all the things all about the Tar targaryens are here um but what is possibly at stake here in terms of themes in terms of what the show's trying to tell us and 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 how that's going to keep us going um it, it is a it is another battle for the throne in the way uh in, in a way and i think the show could potentially have a lot of interesting things to say on uh, what's going on in this world of Song of Ice Fire in terms of this uh, patriotic, uh, patriarchal society. A lot of the tension comes out of Viserys, only as one uh, surviving uh, 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 offspring, a uh, daughter, Rhaenyra, and eventually kind of, hey, I, I got no other heir but her, and I'm going to make her the heir. She's trained, she's in meetings, she's respected, she has followers, but the end of the day in that world it doesn't fully track uh she, she's a woman and, and uh will she actually take control and, and and we know that later on you know when, when cersei takes the throne uh that's that's kind of a, a glass ceiling breaking moment for better or worse with cersei i think the show could deal with that and deal with that kind of uh, uh fighting against that in the rage and then the unintended consequences of that happening you might have been able to have uh, a peaceful uh, world you might even have um a, a house not divided and a house getting stronger and uh I, I i love that 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 could potentially be a play i'm not saying it's going to be a play but it's a lot of what was at, at stake and a lot of what was uh, in uh, the words and the episodes and the moments in uh hbo series around an Targaryen. And a lot of the things that I think made her break and a lot of the ways society treated her. Uh, I always talk about that Peter Dinklage quote of that was the story we were telling and um, how some of it is uh, maybe her choices and her fault. And some of it is what was done to her and how she got in positions of, you know, of, of doing what she had to do. And 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 that slowly eroding her, too. I think that you could find some of those uh, origins in uh, this show, potentially. Uh, and I love this idea, but the 200 years before the fall of the throne, really, but the use of the throne, not, uh, you know, um, not the iron throne, anything that to just, uh, the fall of the throne, how they view, uh, Robert's rebellion, rebellion, not unlike, um, Viserys and Daenerys kind of, uh, grow up, uh, hearing about and thinking and having this view of Robert's rebe rebellion of this usurper destroying our dynasty. And that is ours. Daenerys in the Bell, season eight, going right to that controversial episode. I love it. I love what it means for Daenerys to be looking across at uh, the Red Keep, across King's Landing, a kingdom between her, what she believes is hers, and a kingdom that does not want her there, uh, and how that ties to this history, and how this show begins 200 years before, hey, Targaryens, 200 years before we lost that throne. Here's where we were. And and can you see uh, some of the seeds of uh, the cracks in the foundation form in here? Uh, again, uh, if, if it had gone a little bit different way, if if what's at stake is is the future of this house, if if you work it out without dancing your dragons, uh, are you a stronger house? And also that they feel rightfully in their minds, this is their dynasty. Uh, and and the voiceover of uh, you know dreams didn't make us kings dragons did and Aegon's conquest this manifest destiny of taking this land that it was not originally yours um, the targaryens show up and you know what it was 100 years later uh, always the details get a little fuzzy at this point where Aegon decides you know hey it's time we're gonna take it this is ours we're gonna make it ours and targaryens thinking they have uh, a right to that i still think as this dance of dragons explodes and it will explode we see the shot. We see the shot. What I, I got to assume is at this uh, tourney. Uh, they have the great overhead shot of the jousters. And I'll sh throw some uh, other shots that I've selected. But you got that great overhead shot of the jousters. And you got some green and you got some black. And we, we know this is uh, about to explode. Uh, but how that will uh, overflow and just kind of affect the people of King's Landing, affect the people of this world. I think of, uh, you know, Jorah Mormont. Uh, small folk don't care about this. They want, they want long summers, man. And they don't care about your Game of Thrones. Big paraphrase, of course, for me there. But uh, and we know if you if you're familiar enough with the Dance of Dragons, there's some big events of 
maybe the people have it enough. And, and what did the people think about that there? But this is a show about the Targaryens, and we're about to get a bunch of great Targaryens. One of the questions we've had, and I think we can start to get some of um, the feel, and we have, we've already had some of the answers with some of the press photos we've actually seen. Again, try not to factor in the um, the leaked photos, but um, of, of the look and the feel of the show and all these uh, players. We've got a great cast. The cast has long been out there. Again, Patty Constantine as uh, Viserys Targaryen. Uh, we've got uh, uh, Olivia Cook as Allison Hightower. You see her a lot there. We've got uh, Emma Darcy as uh, Renera Targaryen. And then we've got the young versions of them there, Millie Alcock, uh, who I do believe you see in one of the shots there. Um, uh, let me bring that up here. I do believe. Uh, there we go. That's probably a young Renera Targaryen right there. If you're watching along on YouTube, if you're listening to the podcast, just imagine along with me there. Uh, and then, um, of course, Emily Carey is the young Allison Hightower. Um, uh, we got Reese Stephens' Otto, uh, Otto Hightower, the Hand of the King, Graham, Graham McTavish, uh, um, uh, Fabian Frankel is Kristen Cole, very key player in the early uh, uh, moments of the dance. And of course, Matt Smith as Damon Targaryen, uh, Stephen, uh, Steve Toussaint as Lord Corliss of Alaren. And then uh, this one, I didn't actually know this. Um, Jefferson Hall is Lord Jason Lannister. Jefferson Hall. Why is that uh, interesting? Why, other than, you know, he's, uh, he's a good performer. Uh, including appearances in uh, uh, Force Awakens as a First Order officer, Sherlock Holmes, and Tenet as a as well dressed man. He uh, is Lord uh, Jason Lannister, and he also plays uh, Tylan Lannister. Uh, he also played uh, the uh, Knight of the uh, the uh, the High Garden Knight there. Uh, excuse me, Knight of the Vale. I said High Garden uh, Knight of the Vale in uh, season one of Game of Thrones, uh, where he is uh, the one that gets um, uh, stabbed in the neck, killed by. Uh, uh, the old, um, the old, uh, 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 um, why, uh, uh <laughs> you know, the bad clagate, the mountain. Wow. It's been a day. This is why you should always refresh yourself on names. Uh, oh my gosh. There we go. Uh, yeah. So Hugh of the veil. Vale. Woo, Ken, you went on a journey there. We got there. Uh, yeah. So he's, uh, back in it. He's recast, uh, in, uh, you know, it's, it's a little, uh, uh, we got a little uh, uh, Lannister uh, double casting again, uh, as we got with uh, Martin Lannister and then uh, 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 Tommen uh, in Game of Thrones. Fascinating stuff, man. I, I love and have at me for forgetting names, but like I, this is what I'm saying. We all, I think, a lot of people are starting to need to uh, get back into uh, um, Game of Thrones shape. I've been doing the big rewatch, uh, but. Uh, I think a lot of us today woke up and are like, oh, yeah, yeah, <sighs> got to shake off the cobwebs. I got to get back into this world and figure it out. Uh, all this to say, going through the cast and uh, the look of the show, the feel of the show, the music and the vibe. What was HBO going to do? Uh, what was HBO going to um, how connected do they want this to be? In terms of, uh, I, I think story and the canon of this TV world, I think is relatively going to be the same. Uh, but look and feel, uh, uh, and how much do you want people to see it and go, oh, that is that HBO show I loved. That is the Daenerys I love. That's the same kind of uh, look and feel and outfit and costumes. And, and, and the answer was always, I think we always kind of knew that they're going to be, it's going to be pretty strong. And I was really, uh, the music, the vibe, everything about it had uh, the parts I love about the look of it. I love all the parts. I love. But you know what I mean? Like, I think the show's going to be new. It's got to it's got to get its own footing, but um, it's it's also going to um, it's going to be it, it, it's going to be of this world. And I think everything about this trailer fit perfectly with this world that a lot of us love or or, or did love at one point and maybe want to love again. And I and I love if you're that type of fan and you're coming back to this, um, I, I absolutely think it's um, it's it's totally fine to kind of be like. I'm uh I have I've comp comp uh, uh, complicated uh Game of Thrones almost Game of Thrones like feelings uh, about this show that I'm about to uh, reinvest in again. Um and I think I think uh, they did they found that perfect thread so far of new show, new world, uh you know, uh, same world but new characters, but same feel. And it's so funny cuz so many things out there right now and some have succeeded to a certain degree but so many things are viewed as the next Game of Thrones and have been for a long time. Again, some of them succeed uh, with Last Realm and uh, Vikings and 
and all that kind of uh, 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 kind of content out there. Even Lord of the Rings itself, Game of Thrones was kind of a Lord of the Rings for television, and now the the Lord of the Rings Amazon show is Amazon's attempt to have their own Game of Thrones. It's it's so funny how it works. And so now I even think this world of ice and fire for HBO as HBO tries to expand this uh, franchise with animated shows, more spinoffs, and it, it long moved on from just one spinoff, the the the, um, the Blood Moon pilot that didn't go. Now they're like, hey, we got this, we got this. Uh, we got this world, um, and uh, we need our own Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones needs its own Game of Thrones. Kind of an interesting thing there. Um, so I do want to go into uh, some of the reactions here. Uh, actually, first, let's, uh, let me show some of my favorite shots here. Uh, love love seeing uh, the hand, right? Uh, this uh, you got to uh, assume is Otto Hightower. Uh, and that sigil there, the, the little, uh, uh, we all we all have this uh, paperclip version. If, you, if you're watching here on YouTube, we all have this pa letter opener version of this or uh, something we can pin to our own jacket of, uh, so you can tell your friends you're the hand of the king. So I'd like to see it come on back there. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about, uh, a lot of uh, folks love seeing swords that we're familiar with. Um, but this one here, again, just the looks of it there. By the look of that chin, I think that is Patty Constantine as uh, of Viserys Targaryen, the first. Uh, nice to see that. We talked about... Um, John Renera Targaryen. Um, again, looks like a Targaryen. That's key. How's the show going to be successful? We got we got to look like uh, we got to look like Targaryens. Uh, and speaking of looking like Targaryens, and we got uh, older uh, Renera Targaryen all grows up and uh, looks like her husband, her uncle. Because uh, that's what we're uh, that's what we're going that's what's going on here. Uh, we got Matt Smith, of course. Uh, all you Doctor Who fans are happy. Uh, he is. Uh, Gonna be in here um, as uh, Damon Targaryen, uh, Dragon Rider, and uh, he looks great, man. He looks great. Um, this uh, we'll love this wonderful shot here of uh, we got the Targaryen armor, the red and black. This could very well be at that tourney. Um, could be a, could just be something else. Could be a shot of training. We don't know. That's what I love about teaser trailers. You you you'll spend twenty minutes on what this shot could mean in terms of plot get yourself caught up in the easter egg get yourself caught up in plot and then this could just be a training sequence or it could be absolutely something huge uh we got uh, looks like house flared uh rolling on in and rolling deep into uh, uh the events of the dance of the dragons very excited to see the character of sea snake uh portrayed by steve uh, toussaint uh, brought to life uh, i think if you read um if you read fire and blood and just are familiar with the history uh corliss is uh Absolutely one of the more interesting characters. So many stories to tell. Uh, and I do believe there's even potentially some spinoffs of him or an animated version of some of uh, his adventures, uh, which uh, could be um, um, could be uh, its own uh, interesting series. It, it, it's, it, it's spinning off is spinoff uh, is what they they need to find that kind of um, kind of that formula to break down. But uh the nine, his nine voyages could very well uh, factor into uh, your enjoyment down the line here as a uh, Game of Thrones, Song of Ice and Fire fan. And uh, final one for me, love this shot of the throne. Um, potentially, we could have uh, maybe a young Rhaena Targaryen, uh, Rhaenyra Targaryen, excuse me, uh, staring uh, out at the uh, throne. And this is the throne we're familiar with on the show, which was always slightly different than the books. But this version... We got a lot more swords. This is the Targaryen dynasty at its height right before this huge fracture. And I love what this represents. I love what it represents for us to us as viewers. This is the throne. And we got uh, we got someone sitting on the throne, the sun shining behind. We got someone coveting the throne, someone before the throne. This is something we're so familiar with. But also this is a new show and a new time and all these other uh uh, swords lining in and, and um, what it represents about Aegon's conquest, what it represents of, of Aegon House Targaryen. It's all new stuff to explore. And I think this is the perfect shot. This is my favorite shot that kind of encompasses why I really, at the end of the day, love this teaser trailer, love what we are um, potentially going to get with this series and what it means for both the show, uh, for fans of this world and what it means for its own, uh, just its own identity. And the story it's trying to tell on Twitter. Uh, you can follow me at Ken Knapsack. Uh, if you like, uh, or follow us here at the Good People GPA. We are presented uh, here, Cast the Talks, presented by the Good People Association and on podcast form by Blue Wire Podcast. Check out all their podcasts and check out this podcast here. 
subscribe. We'll get back to the rewatch. I'm actually doing some traveling this week. So actually kind of was perfect. Now I did. I wasn't gonna have time to do uh, a rewatch of, um, Season three, episode seven, that would be next week, um, but perfect timing. Teaser trailer drops. We can just kind of spend some time celebrating that. Subscribe to the podcast um, and uh, get ready to uh, even get more ready for House of the Dragon. But on Twitter, I asked some uh, uh, folks uh, what were the, some of their reactions. Uh, I want to get to some of them. And Brandon Bell uh, pops up here on Twitter at uh, bbell3454. Says so something little. Uh, which I love the little things those little Easter eggs would gravitate to. But seeing Blackfire, Dark Sister, was cool. As boop, at the history uh, uh, of the swords, or uh, as the history of the swords, actually, that's what he meant. I said cool as, boop, but cool as the history. Got it, typo. Uh, the history of the swords is one of my favorite parts of Fire and Blood. And Brandon is right. That book, Fire and Blood, really helps you kind of focus and trace the history of uh, the great swords of the land. And we love those swords. We love Widow's Whale. Whether or not you love the person holding it, we love ice. Uh, we 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 love uh, Oathkeeper. We love all of our swords. Uh, Heartsbane, uh, name them. We love them. And this show, if you love swords and swords with meaning and merit, you are about to get a lot of them there. So, Brandon, love that you pointed that out there as uh, well. Uh, then uh, we got our friend uh, Donald Long, a.k.a. Ranger Donald, uh, checking in with uh, a lot of stuff. I'm just going to read uh, Donald's uh, thoughts here on Twitter. You can follow him at Ranger Donald One if you'd like. He says, I love this teaser. It's exactly that only uh, a tease, uh, exactly only a tease of what's to come. I wonder about some of the color grading in some shots, but that's very minor. Hey, that's a fair question. I especially love that they tried to blend the book and show thrown into one as we were discussing. Yeah, I love that too. Can't wait to see the dragons. Um, and he had some uh, technical questions. And I've seen a lot of these here. Remember, we're in the middle of the streaming wars. That's our own dance, the streaming wars. And this is HBO and HBO Max uh, trying to get you to subscribe, trying to get you to pay, trying to get you to stay on their service. And we are reaping the benefits of that with great content, uh, hopefully great content. Uh, but also it's the truth. It is the business. And Donald asks, uh, with both HBO and HBO Max being advertised, how do you think it'll premiere? Air on TV, then drop on Max, or Aaron drop the same time on both. Uh, then he adds, plus the wigs look better on screen than on uh, blurry pictures from the set photos. Yes, that's uh, that's true. That's why I don't spend too much time looking at set photos and leaks. Um, also, we got a quick glimpse of the cat's paw dagger in the hands of Allison Hightower. Will uh, will we find more about the blade and its origins, or just a cool old look moment? Uh, call back to the main series. So, in terms of the business of it, I, I personally think, uh, I, unless I, uh, it's been said else, otherwise uh, elsewhere, I think I think we got. Uh, Dropping these at the same time, similar, um, you know, is a little different feel. I don't know. I don't know a lot of people who still have, say, DirecTV and the HBO package. I'm just running through my life. Yeah, I think everyone I know has HBO Max or is sharing some kind of password. So I think they'll do both. Um, uh, but the question remains, is it a midnight launch? Do you launch it at the same time? If it's if it's uh, the old days, right? Sundays at 6 p.m., HBO, you know, uh, the, the old static logo pops up. 6 p.m. my time, 9 p.m. Uh, for my friends on the East Coast. Like, uh, do you want to capture that feeling? I definitely don't. This is not going to be a binged show. I think this is going to be a weekly release. So it's a fair question, Donald. And and, and this could set the tone for some of the bigger shows coming forward. Star Wars always uh, already knows what it's doing with Disney+. Plus. Marvel already knows what it's doing with Disney+. Plus. You're going to get a midnight release. They don't need, need to put it anywhere else. But, but if it's HBO... Putting it entirely behind your own paywall, behind your service, is uh, is that going to work? Is that going to uh, bring the numbers that you you want? Um, fair questions to ask. Uh, boring business stuff, maybe, but also uh, just interesting for uh, the show. And and will it be the same type of type of experience? If the numbers are huge, I would expect some of the numbers in terms of viewers to be huge. But will it have the same water cooler type feel? Nowadays, a lot of us uh, are in our own bubbles watching the shows we want, but I think some shows break through. I think The Mandalorian broke through, became a water cooler show. I think the MCU programs uh, on Disney Plus have uh, broken through, and there's other things along the way. Some of the uh, the bigger type of programs, and, and, and even the movies are, are, are shows that get released and kind of get a little hashtag viral promotion behind them, and then they become kind of a water cooler uh, piece of material for the moment. But Will this be the same type of experience? And will we as viewers feel feel the same? If if we're super excited, if you if you uh, tune into HBO Max at, at midnight on on the debut uh, day of this episode of the first episode, and you're excited about it, um, 
and, 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 and you can't necessarily run to Twitter and spoil it. You maybe can go into a discord of a, of a podcast or, or a creator that you like and discuss it there. But uh, you, you're, it's not going to be one time we're all watching it. Uh, so the experience might be a little different. Will that dampen our joy, dampen our experience? I don't know. For me, it might actually make it a little uh, a little uh, easier to take. Uh, where season eight of Game of Thrones, as I sat there really enjoying the hell out of that season and then going online to just find just an absolute war breaking out. Whether or not some of the criticism was completely valid, some of it was, whether some of it was just hot takes, talking points, uh, fluff criticism that didn't sit for me, a lot of it was. Doesn't matter. My joy, my joy was a little dampened, and so I withdrew. So having a show that I can just kind of sit down and watch when I want on that day, maybe I manage my uh, you know social media a little bit better, so I'm not spoiled. I, I I personally might enjoy it. So we'll see. I don't know where that sits in terms of uh, yeah, cat spot dagger. Uh, look, uh, I I always approach it like this, and it's maybe a little less fun. It could mean the entire world. It could mean nothing. It could just be a little thing if you pick up any of the Easter eggs here. I'm, I just don't want to get caught up in plot. And Donald, I know you as a viewer don't either, but it, I, I'm just taking it as something fun, something fun, fun from this world um, and something that maybe we trace, but but just something that's there. Great seasoning uh, on this meal uh, we're about to eat, which then George R. R. Martin would describe the meal in a lot of detail. Uh, so, Donald, thank you for those questions there. Wonderful stuff. Uh, and then uh, moving along to uh see what else we got here our friend eric monroe always chimes in has some great insights and just uh, celebrates this like the rest of us here he says just seeing that world again was everything like you it's important to me that it looks right and based on that teaser trailer i think they nailed it yeah uh and bat of gotham follows up with another tweet into me there saying one of the best parts about this was the visuals the one minute teaser looked better visually than the last three M mcu shows combined now look um, that is that is bad if Gotham's uh, saying I'm not saying that I might agree. But if you love the MCU shows, celebrate those. If you love their looks, celebrate those. Uh, sometimes it's not um, it's not always, uh, you know, uh, one for one in terms of uh, in terms of comparisons. But uh, I understand that there. But the look of the show at the end of the day, you want to know my absolute opinion on the Steezer trailer. You want to know where I go. Uh, you want to know the breakdowns and who I think is who. And all, that's all great. Uh, at the end of the day, this trailer made me happy because of the way it looked and it looked uh, the way it felt, the music, the music cues, uh, the costuming, everything about it. Home run so far. We got a long way to go. And HBO is probably pretty confident with them uh, with this. Uh, also, it should be interesting. It's interesting to note that it uh, uh, looks like on October 26th. HBO Max will be available in Europe. So if we're trying to wonder about when this might actually come on out, um, it could be that could be around the time. But it's also interesting to um, it's interesting to look kind of like uh, at Disney Plus and Mandalorian, where they launched that service and Mandalorian with uh, Disney Plus not available in a lot of different regions, markets, whatnot. Uh, HBO Max has been around for a bit, a little more established. Um, just I know it's switched a lot uh, for what it was called and everything, but it's it's been there a little bit. So maybe they do want uh, to sync up and um, have HBO Max and uh, House of the Dragon available in Europe at the same time as the world. Anyways, more business questions there. Uh, great stuff, great thoughts, uh, great tweets. Uh, more might be coming in uh, by the time uh, I release this episode. Uh, but this is where now you come on in here to join the conversation with me. We are certainly not done talking about this trailer. We are uh, certainly not done having thoughts and picking out Easter eggs and playing around with the potential themes. Uh, more to come. This is just exciting. And don't forget, we got soon, was it February, the official Game of Thrones convention going to be in Las Vegas. Uh, looking pretty good that I will be there. I think it's at the Rio. Um, so this is just a tease. Here we are in October. We're just starting spooky season. We're just starting dragon season. Uh, but by February, I think we'll uh, be able to see a lot more and we'll have a lot more to discuss, which is why I remind you, hey, uh, subscribe to this podcast. Go to our YouTube channel because there's going to be some uh, YouTube specific things we'll put there. Just some uh some fun getting ready. If I, if I have, if I have trouble at this point, remembering Sir Gregor Clegane um, and all the names and I'm a little rusty, 
I, I imagine uh, it's okay to, to admit that uh, you might be in that boat too. Some of you are pouring over these names. Rachel Cushing, when, and when Rachel comes back down here, Cash talk, she'll just pour out those names and say them perfectly. Uh, I'll say, I'll say Renera Targaryen correctly 75% of the time. But we're, we're going to be putting out uh, some of those reminders, some of the, uh, you know, not focusing on the plot, but just who they are and what they might represent in the show and what they connect to and just getting you set up for House of the Dragon. Why? Because it's fun. Because it's Game of Thrones. Because we love this world of ice and fire. So I'm out of here today. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, don't forget, if you want to support our Kickstarter, we're uh, on Kickstarter. The GPA has got futility, the actual game of living. It's out there for you to support. We're very close to reaching our goals, uh, but we have more goal goals to get to, stretch goals to get to, to get more versions of the game cards out. Uh, and uh, and make even more so we can spread the joy of Futility, the actual game of living. The board game, you can find it on uh, Kickstarter. Special thanks to Blue Wire Podcast for uh, working with us here and putting out our GPA network of podcasts. You can follow me at Ken Napsock. Go to my website, KenNapsock.com for more information on all the other things I do. And again, follow me and uh, use the hashtag Casually Talk. Follow good people at Good People GPA and use the hash hashtag Casually Talk. Tweet me your thoughts. I'm always here to celebrate. I'm always here to dig into it and find the meanings. Uh, go be below the surface a little bit. But we're also here to have fun talking about House of the Dragon. That is it for this week. What a fun day. What a fun surprise in the world of Westeros, Essos, and beyond. We'll see you next time here on Casterly Talk. <laughs>